Hey guys, what's up? Scary Bear coming at you again here. Hey, listen, I wanted to give you a quick update on what's going on in my life. So, as you all know, I got the new tor the new tornado uh, the new tornado 280 came in the other day, and uh, I was waiting on the oil. The oil has come in, so I was on my way to work this morning. And I thought I'd share this with you guys. I want you to see the landing field. It has been raining for oh my gosh, four days. Ever since I got the machine, it's been raining, so I can't actually go fly it or or, or do much with it. But uh, I wanted to show you my landing field. Hopefully this will show up, but it's raining now. It's been thunderstorming all morning. It's predicted to thunderstorm for like the next 10 days, so I don't know when I'm gonna get a fly. But I'm gonna pan over here and let you see the landing field, right? It's like a, it's like a pond. Now I don't know how well that's showing up on camera, but I really wanted to share that with you guys. There's almost a, almost like a, 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 a river flowing through my, my landing zone out there. But listen, I gotta get to work. I just thought I'd share that with you guys real quick. When we get home tonight, since I did get the oil in, uh, man, a nasty, nasty day. Uh, since I did get the oil in, we're gonna mix the ratio up. I went online and got a PDF file uh, for the Nitro 280, so got it all put together, got the right mix ratio. And we're gonna fire that sucker up and see how she runs, guys. So I'll catch up to you later tonight when I get home from work. Talk to you later. Ugh. All right, guys, I might have lied to you just a little bit, right? Today is absolutely gorgeous. I know in the last uh, little video I did, I showed you how wet the yard was. It's still pretty wet. If you look out this way, it's still, it's still decently wet, right? I did get a little bit of mowing done, so it is drying up some. It is drying up a little bit, but it is such a gorgeous day today. I'm hoping to get to fly tonight. Maybe the new machine, maybe not. I don't know yet. Might just take up the old fresh breeze. But what we are going to do today is we're going to put that fuel in there, the oil fuel mix. I mixed it, as it said, per the PDF online. Um, and we're going to run it through the cycle. It's like uh, 4,000 RPMs for 30 minutes, 6,000 for 10 minutes. That's what the PDF says. I'm pretty sure that's it. I'll double check it before I do it. But let's get some fuel in this thing. Let's fire it up for the first time. And let's see how she runs, right? Yeah. All right, guys. As you can see, it's a little bit tight getting in here. Um, Getting, sorry about the shaky camera getting in here to this fuel. I put a little bit in but man It's really tough to get in there. So I'm gonna try this funnel that I've got try to rig something up. So this funnel will hold uh, Gosh bear with me here, man. This is this is uh, gonna be trial and error. I think so. Oh my gosh Where should I hook it right? So will that hold it? Oh Man that is so sketchy That is so sketchy Oh man. All right, so getting fuel in is not easy, I see. All right. Well, let me try something else. Let me see if I can rig something up here and we'll, we'll put some fuel in there and, and we'll get it fired up. But that is definitely not easy to get in there with any kind of fuel can, right? Okay guys, what I think I'm gonna try, this one was way too long, right? I just couldn't find a, a, good, a good way to get it in here. Just there was nowhere, I mean, as you can see, there's just nowhere to put it. So I have this one here that uh, is cut off a little bit shorter. And it seems to slide right in there and set up like that. I hope you can see that on the GoPro. I know it's probably not real good, but it looks like it's a little more secure in there. And we're gonna pour fuel right in there and uh, and hopefully we'll get it all fueled up. I don't know, let's see. Man, I just do not like this. And look at that, it's giving fuel everywhere. Oh my gosh. Uh, let me get a paper towel. Man, that's just getting fuel all over the place. Why in the world would they make it so hard to get fuel in there, man? I mean, I'm getting fuel on those wires, which I know can't be good. It'd be corrosive on those wires. What a terrible, terrible design, guys. That is, that is absolutely terrible. I've got fuel running all down this thing and I can't, I don't even have a gallon in it yet. I don't have one liter or one gallon, whatever they call that. A Little bit disappointing, right? So let's just keep at it, see what we can come up with. So it looks like the only way to get this to run and work, I'm pinching that hose right there. I apologize if you can't see real well, guys, but I'm trying to do two things at once here. But I'm having to pinch that hose in order to get that fuel to pour in there. What a terrible, terrible design that is.
Wow, all right guys. If any of you have any suggestions for me, I would absolutely love to hear them. That is one of the worst, worst ways of ever getting fuel in a fuel tank. I was trying to take that up to the five mark. I'll show you what I got. I got that up to the, to almost the four, so three and a half. But gosh, man, my arms are wore out trying to hold it over. That is just the worst design I have ever seen, guys. That is absolutely terrible. There is fuel all over this thing, right, that I've got to clean up. Not happy about that. If you guys got some ideas on how, how do you put your fuel in there, guys? What's the, what's the trick? What am I missing? So uh, send me some ideas. I'd sure appreciate it. Uh, let's get this cleaned up, and we'll get it started. All right, guys, we got it all fueled up. We're gonna give it the first try here. We're gonna see what happens. Let's start it up and let's let's hope for the best, right guys? Let's see what we can do. Get back up just a little bit here. All right guys. Get a ton of power right really pushes hard on your back and i'm not even getting a half throttle yet guys so the warm-up process is going great uh, i'm gonna keep at it getting a little 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 tired but hey that's all part of it i wish i had a bracket or something i could set up to uh to mount this to instead of have it on your back but i'm sure not gonna do it without a bracket so anyway yeah guys so far so good everything seems to be running great let's start her back up
Okay, guys, yeah, too, uh, I was doing the warm-up process, and I, and I remembered, it's like, you know what would make this so much easier, right? If, so I got me one of these, right, guys? So I got me this, uh, the tachometer and hour meter. I'm going to go ahead and install it on here before I do the full break-in process. Um, it's going to be so much easier to see what my RPMs is once I get this put on. Kind of weird, though, they recommend, uh, they recommend on the website the break-in process at certain RPMs, but they don't supply you with one of these. I mean, I... I they ought to at least say like, get you one or uh, be prepared to buy one something like that luckily I knew I needed one I knew it wouldn't come with it but it's tough to do the proper break-in at the RPMs and the time that they they suggest if you don't have one of these so I would suggest if you order one of these paramotors get you one of these beforehand so it comes you can install it and then do the break-in process you can be much more accurate that's what I'm getting ready to do now all right guys so the the break-in process is done i've done the full the full uh, break-in as the book said it's been run through it's been warmed up it's been ran at certain rpms which uh i do have the the tail tack on there which helped out a lot guys i do recommend that it tells you exactly what rpms are at least close to it the rpms you're you're doing so anyway sorry for the short video guys um i just wanted to keep you updated and tell you what's going on the engine is running great i'm super happy I'm ready to fly it, but I'm not ready to fly it. Does that make sense? So I still got to do some forward launches, got to do some reverse kiting, some, some mock takeoffs, some practice takeoffs, which I'm still going to do before I ever actually apply power and, and get in the air. And I think we need to shorten my brake toggles just a little bit. I've got a lot of play in those before I start to brake. And obviously the brakes are important to coming in and do that flare. Uh, when you come in to lay on your feet, you want to make it as soft and as easy as possible. It's not quite as big deal on the wheels, you know, but on the... On a foot launch, you really want to land as, as smooth and easy as possible. So I think we're going to shorten those brake toggles just a little bit. Um, we'll find out more of that when we start kiting it up and doing things like that. But anyway, short video, guys. Just wanted to keep you updated, keep you in the loop what's going on. Take you step by step through this whole process as I learned to learn to fly the Tornado 280, guys. So anyway, till next time, this is Scary Barry out. I appreciate you coming along and uh, seeing the skies, guys. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.